Welcome back to Twin Cities Live. Chris Hockey from KFan is in the co-host seat today. We are loving having you here back. Thank you for having me. So good. You, of course, know the Disney movie Frozen. Yeah. Back in 2014 on Twitter, someone asked one of the main writers and directors of Frozen, her name is Jennifer Lee, a question about Elsa. This is interesting. Yeah, the tweet actually said, the way Elsa thinks and her body language strongly suggests anxiety and depression to me. I was wondering if that was, and Jennifer responded, definitely was intentional to show anxiety and depression. So anxiety is something that impacts millions of Americans, and I love that they were representing it there. Yeah. Dr. Karen Ryan is a psychologist with Nystrom and Associates, and she's joining us now to talk about anxiety and panic attacks, and uh, we always love it when you pop by. Dr. Yeah. Ryan, it's great to see you. Thank you, nice to see you too. Let's talk about the cause of anxiety in general. I think even if you've never experienced anxiety in your life, probably over the last two years, you've had some bouts with it. Yeah. So what's the cause? Definitely. And anxiety is really an adaptive response that we have, right? So what we do as humans is we scan our area. We kind of scan our environment for any threats, right? And so when we respond to a threat, we do this in an adaptive way that is going to protect us from a physical threat. And so our bodies have a physiological response, and that's really effective and helpful if we have an actual physical threat. Yeah. But it's it's not as helpful when it's an emotional and um, interpersonal threat to so us. So this is like your goosebumps that you were talking about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like that. exactly. Yeah. This yeah. is it. The goosebumps were like the physical thing, but then the the mental and emotional thing. But you're right. I, I feel like. I don't know. I mean, listen, I'm not a doctor. This is Doc Hawk over here. You <laughs> actually are a doctor. But I, I just wonder if the amount of information we're mm. getting all the time, yes. because I feel like you're hearing more and more people, particularly kids, say, mm -hmm. I experience anxiety. When I was a kid, I don't remember hearing about it that much. Right. I think yeah. the stigma's going away. But do you wonder if just like this onslaught of like ding, 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 yeah. all the time is impacting us? Yeah. And you think just simply about the amount of decisions we have to make every day of what is safe and what isn't? When do I wear my mask? How do I have to stay further away? And so there's always these sincere threats now in our environment of if we're going to be safe. And so we know that there's a cognitive impact where we kind of think about it and ruminate the decision making. But sometimes what we don't acknowledge is how significant we can feel it physiologically, mm -hmm. the Im impact on our body. Sometimes like, oh, it can't be just anxiety, but just anxiety can have a huge impact on our bodies. And some of the ones we don't notice as much is that we can have tingness our tingling or numbness in our hands or cold hands. And again, it goes back to that adaptive response of if I'm being chased by a woolly mammoth and I'm gonna get my hand cut off, I don't wanna bleed out as fast, right. right? And if I'm gonna have to run for a long time, I want all my blood to go to my internal core organs so that I can be really effective. Same sort of thing when we get that dizziness or lightheadedness with a blood pressure drop or our digestion really stops and slows again, so that way our body says, we don't wanna deal with digestion, we're gonna just get rid of this, so that way we can focus on the stressors at play. Mm. We're talking about legitimate threats there, but there's also the perceived threat. And yeah. I, I believe yes. that obviously uh, kids, especially these days, but adults as well, are so inundated with things that freak you out, that scare you, for mm -hmm. lack of a better way to say it. Uh, my problem as a parent, and even probably as a child as well, was doing a poor job of uh, experiencing that emotionally with my kid. In other words, I would say, you're, you don't need to be afraid of that, or this doesn't, that's not real. And it, I, I think I did a poor job because I, don't, I didn't acknowledge that they were afraid. I tried to talk mm. them out of being afraid, if you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah, and you have the best of intentions. Of course. Right, Chris, where you're just wanting to help them feel better. But will actually help them feel better, like you're reckoning, is, is maybe to say that that is really scary, or there are a lot of decisions, aren't there? And that validation that can come first and then simply helping them slow their body down. Okay, that's really great stuff. Let's talk about panic attacks, mm -hmm. shall we? Because, you know, this is a different thing and if you've ever experienced one, it can be really, really yeah. terrifying. Very. So if you're, ta if you're saying like, oh, you know, again, oh, I'm, this is gonna cause me to have a panic attack or I'm having a panic attack, what's really happening when people are like incapacitated by a panic attack? Yeah. What you're highlighting is that we can have periods of high intensity or lots of anxiety with some of those symptoms that we talked about, but a panic attack is a really a distinct, short, intense period of time. So as opposed to anxiety, which kind of builds over time, a panic attack comes on quite abruptly and it feels incredibly intense. And the key aspects of it, there's some of those crossovers with those other symptoms, but there's gonna be a sense of um, panic. There's gonna be a sense of dread. It's gonna feel like, a lot of people feel like they're dying or having a heart attack. There is chest pain. It feels like you are choking and cannot catch your breath. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other piece is it can feel like you're kind of out of touch with reality. 
And so again, comes on really fast, really intense. And so if you've ever wondered, like, have I, you'll know if you've had one because they are absolutely terrifying. Yeah, I have had one yeah. and I was in the ER and it yes. was wow. terrifying and I was also pregnant and it was real. I mean, I thought I was having a heart attack. Yeah. I, I really thought yep. I, I didn't, I, I mean, I thought this is so, it was so painful. It's such mm -hmm. a strange thing because then later you sort of feel like, well, it was just that like, it, but it's not just that mm -hmm. it's weird. It's so weird how mm -hmm. the mental thing yeah. then turns into such a physical thing, which is another way that I think we need to start connecting more that your mental health is your physical health. Mm -hmm. it, it's one in the same. They, they absolutely are. And that key piece of, again, being able to validate like how amazing our bodies are and that this response makes sense, right? And so when you're like, how can it just be that? Well, it is. And you did the right thing of getting it checked out first to make sure it's not a heart attack or something. But then once you can recognize it and know what it is, that's so helpful, um, just having that knowledge and understanding. So if it does happen again or you see it in a loved one or a friend, as you will, because we know one in 10 each year will have a panic attack, wow. you know how to help respond to that in an effective way. Yeah. And it must be terrifying to have that for the first time as an adult, right? Uh, yeah. For it to come out of nowhere yeah. like that. So how do you help somebody if you recognize that's happening? Yeah. It, stay as calm as you can um, and tell them, I'm here with you. I'm not going to leave. You can name it. Say, I think that you're having a panic attack. Mm -hmm. And then you can affirm, like, I know this might feel terrifying and it's really scary and it is not dangerous. This will not last forever. Mm -hmm. um, you can encourage them to sit down, get them a glass of water. Um, oftentimes they're not going to want to talk a lot. That's okay. But if they're able to, you can kind of help ground and bring them back by having them count why they breathe with you. You can do tasks like having them tap their feet or tap their hands or raise one arm while they breathe. Oh, see this, we need to do this, Hawk. Doc Hawk, get in on it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and so it, again, kind of brings you back to your body and it's something else to focus on, but it's not um, gonna be a mental challenge. Yeah, this yeah. is great. Uh, Dr. Ryan, you're so incredible. And then I also just wanna mention before we go, I think yeah. it, trying to it, work through that in therapy is so helpful because I started feeling really fearful about if it yeah. happened again. And yep. working on that with a therapist made such a huge difference. You and start to recognize those little triggers yeah. and can recognize when it might and be coming. And you're not so fearful about yeah. what, if it happens again, which hmm. I think was really helpful for me. Dr. Ryan, yeah. we love you. You're amazing. Oh, appreciate breathe you, in, thank breathe you. Out. We like that. Nystrom & Associates provides care in the fields of psychiatry, psychology, family therapy, and more, and they have 20 locations in the Twin Cities. They work with couples, families, and individuals of all ages. So if you're struggling with stress, anxiety, depression, or addiction, reach out to them today. And I also like to say, it doesn't have to be debilitating those no. things. It's if you're feeling like these little twinges, you can live a happier life. You can feel better. Yeah. That's what matters. You can. Yeah. Good job, Chris Hockey. Thank okay, you. coming up next.